Welcome back to another episode of Beginner's Guide with Rust. I'm your host, Thomas, and today we're looking at basic types today. So if we head on over to Rust language cheat sheet here, this is the cheats.rs website. I'll link this in the, into the description. Uh, you can also fork this onto the, uh, by a guy named Ralph Bidart. He's the one that created it. So definitely check that out. So yeah, if you scroll down here, you'll click on this basic types here. This will kind of give you a basic idea of kind of the uh, numeric types that are built into the core of the language. In Rust, you can specify any unsigned or signed integer, right, or floating point types. So here you've got U8, I8, 16, 32-bit, 64-bit, 128-bit, 32, and 64, floating point numbers. You also have U size and I size. So you see that quite a bit. That's actually just referring to the same size as whatever the architecture is of the platform. So if it's a 32-bit platform, right, that's going to take that size. If it's a 64-bit platform, it's that size. Uh, that's kind of what you would expect. Here you've got the maximum values for U8, 16. This is just, again, following the unsigned and signed types here. So U8, you would expect to be maximum value of 255 for its corresponding sign type. Its maximum value is 127, negative 128 for I8 on the minimum value. You notice here you can actually specify these underscores. Uh, this is just a nice way to kind of clean up if you have a large number like, like this, if you want to make it a little bit more readable, you can use underscores. Underscores can also be used uh, in the case of like here where I want to specify that it's an F32. You can do it postfix, right, like that. Uh, most of the time you'll see it like this in this first example here where the X is specifying that it's a U8 and I'm assigning it to a 4. That's because if I say X equals F, uh, just a 4 value, then maybe that would be uh, a U32, right, instead by default. Uh, so yeah, if you do that, this will kind of specify the type here. Another thing to keep, keep in mind here is, so you've got floating point types, right? This follows this uh, IEEE specification, and it depends on the platform endianness, right? So depending on the endianness of that. Uh, there's a few pitfalls that you want to look out for in Rust, uh, specifically if you're casting between types. Um, let's say you have a floating point number, a floating point 32, and you're casting down casting it to a U8, an unsigned 8-bit uh, eight, eight integer. You have to be careful because that is actually just going to truncate that number, and so you may want to consider doing something like uh, x.round. Similarly, if you do like a large F32-bit, right, and you downcast it, it's going to take the closest available number. Uh, there's other cases here where uh, this may actually truncate the excess bits. So, uh, yeah, something something to be aware of when you're doing this, right? Some arithmetic pitfalls, right? So you can't divide by zero if you have a known fixed size. Uh, in this case, this is a dynamic variable, so we don't know what this will be, but if it happens to be zero, then that'll create a panic. Uh, panic in Rust is kind of another way of saying that it just crashes, right? So. That's different than a compilation error. Right, uh, you can't add two numbers of the same type that happen to go outside of the uh, boundaries. So U8's max value is 255. So if you attempt to do a 200 U8 plus 200 U8, you're going to get a compilation error. Uh, you'll see that actually if you do like an overflow type error, if you are incrementing a uh, U8, for instance, or maybe decrementing a, an unsigned number, and it goes below zero, then you're going to create, you're going to get an error uh, for that. So something to be aware of, right? Uh, you'll see this D and R. That's actually just referring to uh, debug or release mode. So that's just uh, how it's behaving depending on the modes that you're using. So if you're doing a 200 debug, right, that might panic and here it's in release mode this will cause an overflow so something to be aware of uh, another thing to take, take a look at if you look at the rust book here uh, it also specifies a couple other things like if you want to specify a hexadecimal number uh, use this u at zero uh, x uh, that, that's you can kind of see that in some other languages you also specify octals so zero o seven seven you can specify binary numbers this way so zero b uh, if you want to specify just a byte, right, you can use this syntax, b, uh, prefixed by the strings, and that'll actually give you the bytes 
for that. A single byte, right, would be like this. If you want to do multiple bytes, then you would have B um, with, instead of a single quote, you'd have a double quotes, right? So that'll give you an array of bytes, uh, which is kind of nice. Right, here you can see number literals have, can be multiple numeric types, allow a type suffix such as U8. So you don't have to have that underscore, uh, but you can also use it as a visual separator. Just makes it easier to read. Right, floating point numbers, numeric operations. So this is something that you'd expect in any language, right? You want to add between numbers, subtract, multiplication, division, uh, remainder, right? Uh, you have Booleans, right, as you'd expect. So true and false values. Again, if you want to specify the type, you use this colon and then the type you're looking at and you're assigning it. So this is an explicit type annotation. So that is. You have character types. Uh, characters are a little bit more complex to go over, so I won't go into that in too, too much detail in this video, uh, but it kind of deals with the idea that uh, in general it's UT storing UTF-8 encoded values in Rust. Uh, you also have tuples. This is uh, compound types, so if you want to do like 500, 6.4, 1 as a single thing, then this variable has a is now being specified by this uh, tuple here. So if you want to grab values out, it's typically indexed by a number. So it'd be tuple two dot zero or one or two, right? And you can see that here, right? Zero, one or two. Uh, array types here. So if you got simple array, one, two, three, four, five, this is a fixed size. So this is known at compile time. You cannot, uh, if you need something that needs to grow or expand, you're going to use something called a vector. And that's a, we'll get into that a little bit later, right? If you need to specify an array of a particular size, you can do it this way, right? So this would be a size five array of type I32, right? You can also initialize it to contain some elements. So the array A will contain five elements. That will be initially set to the value three, right? And so that'll kind of give you that. So that's kind of a nice little concise way to do that. You need to grab things out. Uh, you just use this uh, bracket syntax here on an array. Um, there's other things here like invalid array access here. So if I'm using a index, right, and you're not checking it properly, that's going to create a uh, problem for you. So don't do that, right? That actually panics. Yeah, so that's basic types. Definitely check out this cheats.rs. And yeah. Uh, we'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks again for watching.